The uh, AODAP uh, study that we published was a, uh, a four-center uh, experience where we were looking at microcatheter free delivery of large bore aspiration catheters using the Aristotle 24 macro wire. The goal was to see if we could successfully deliver large bore aspiration catheters only over the wire alone, okay, without the use of an intervening microcatheter or stentriever. Uh, what we found in a, in a study that included almost 50 patients was that uh, about 78% of the time we were able to deliver an aspiration catheter over a macro wire, the Aristotle 24 alone, and about 76% of the time we were able to provide aspiration only, so contact aspiration as the sole source of thrombectomy. And those two populations overlapped to give us about a 65% uh, likelihood of having a successful Aristotle only adapt thrombectomy. That is to say, delivery of an aspiration catheter uh, and contact aspiration alone in these patients. We had, uh, so for patients who underwent successful Aristotle only ADAPT, we were seeing procedural times that were on the 15 to 16 minute range. We were seeing uh, ticky 2B or greater scores in the 90%. We were seeing um, first pass aspiration on something on the range of 55 to 60%. O24 uh, macro wires are similar in size to an O21 microcatheter. So they are as supportive uh, as an O21 microcatheter, which plenty of people will use for, for stroke thrombectomy. So we find that that large bore does a couple of things. One, it mitigates a ledge effect, especially when you're trying to deliver a large bore aspiration catheter uh, past the ophthalmic. We find it to be very supportive. You have 35 centimeters of that O24 uh, outer diameter, which will extend from the skull base into the, the distal MCA territory without a problem. So you have a large area of support for getting your aspiration catheter up. And then on top of that, even though it's a larger uh, wire than I think most people are used to, it maintains torque and shape uh, to really be super selective when you're trying to reach distally and remains very, very soft for distal reach as well. In our practice, we have, this has been our first line approach. Uh, however, I think that we are starting to identify that there probably are some patients who are not best suited for it. So, you know, I think that the next steps that we have to do as we kind of investigate the technique further is can we a priori decide on a CTA that people are getting in the emergency department who is or who is not going to be uh, an appropriate candidate for it? I think uh, excessive tortuosity sometimes can be a limiting factor, especially in the cavernous segment of the ICA. Uh, I do find that when people are trying to pick up on the technique, having your guide cath, your base catheter in the distal cervical ICA and not closer to that, you you know, the cervical bifurcation probably makes it easier, probably gives you some more support. And one of the other things that I think we're finding is that there are different aspiration catheters that respond a little bit differently uh, to being able to be successful for the procedure. So what we're going to be doing as we kind of advance the technique and publish a little bit more about it is be able to tell these physicians who'd like to pick up on using this technique, well, you may want to lean towards this aspiration catheter because this seems to track better, be more uh, amenable to the technique. talked about was that we've got 78% deliverability, and we've got 76% uh, aspiration ability, so there's always room to improve there. So deliverability, we already started to investigate uh, using the new Aristotle 35 wire. So bigger wire provides more support, provides more ledge uh, mitigation compared to the 24. Uh, I think we're going to be seeing a better ability to deliver uh, aspiration catheters using that. We're already uh, enrolling patients in a, in a registry right now where we're going to be able to start to investigate that. And then we have to think about how we're aspirating, and maybe there's better forms of aspiration that can allow this technique to, to shine even more.
You know, I think that, that this novel technique gives a couple of options. I think it's, it proves to be fast, okay? So I think we were showing very good times, especially in, in patients who had uh, appropriate anatomy for it. I think we showed that it's safe. You know, we did not have any, uh, in, in my experience, intravascular injuries uh, secondary to these larger wires, which I think people may ha need to have a little bit of a comfort level uh, to start using. And I think that there's also financial benefits to it. I think that if you are mitigating microcatheter use, you are saving upwards towards depending on what microcatheter that you were using and depending on your uh, your uh, success rate, upwards towards a, a thousand US dollars per case, which can be a really uh, impressive uh, amount of money for somebody, you know, a center that's doing 200, 300 uh, stroke thrombectomies a year. Uh, and I think that it's ease of working with your staff. We have a lot of issues uh, in the States right now with staff turnover. You have new techs every week who are coming into your lab and to put together a triaxial system may not be as easy. So if you can make it easier for the people you're working with, you can have a smoother and, and more efficacious procedure. We've uh, been starting to use the Airstyle 35, the Colossus, uh, pretty recently. Uh, been a limited release so far, uh, probably 15 to 20 cases in so far for, for stroke thrombectomy. Uh, our uh, rate of delivery has significantly increased. Uh, so, you know, in 78% in the in our study uh, that we published, uh, we're probably pushing closer to 90% uh, delivery rates now with Airstyle 35. Uh, I think so. Better support, probably, uh, especially in tortuous uh, cavernous anatomy. Obviously, better mitigation of ledge effect at the ophthalmic, and more support for getting up the, these big catheters. Uh, so, so far, we are seeing even better deliverability, uh, which is exactly what we would have suspected. Um, but, you know, to be fair, we are waiting until we have a little bit more registry data to, to really make any uh, concrete uh, recommendations, but it is looking pretty bright. Mm -hmm.